Hi guys, I'm Sam, and I'm a little bit obsessed with pins. My love for them only began several years ago, and since then, I've been building up a little collection for myself. What I have here is not all of them, just what I could comfortably fit into the frame, but as you can see, this is already quite a random bunch. There's one pin in particular that I'll be discussing at length today, but first, I want to run through some of my favorites. First, there's this beautiful Zelda pin, gift from a friend. I have this cute bunny pin from my friend's brand, Ukidoki. There's also pins from when I traveled. These here I got when I went to DC a few years ago with my family. It was fun. There's this pin by Ross. Some of you may know him. Him and other artists I noted will be listed down below. There's also gifts from my brother. When he went to New York, he got me these. I love them. Also, Beyonce. Best quotes, I live by this, okay? You can't go wrong. This video is about this pin right here. I designed this pin from scratch, super proud of it. It's gorgeous. I knew that with my obsession with pins, it was inevitable that I'd start creating some of my own. So this video will walk you through my entire process of how I made this guy right here. First, I had to make the design, or the line work, and I already have a solid base of artwork that I've made, and I decided to try to use one of those as the foundation for this pen. By the way, if you want it, you can get it on my Etsy, that's what we're looking at right here. And I decided to scroll through, see what I have, and see what can make the best pin design so far. Particularly, I had this red and green macaw. I've always thought it looks really good, especially with the gold. and kind of already looked like a pin design to me, so I figured, let's let's just start with that. Here you can definitely see how the gold shines. That's at least on the artwork itself. But, as a pin, I was like, let's see what we can do. So from there, I took the digital version of that painting and started outlining it. I outlined it a bit too much in the beginning, you'll see me erase them. But that's because I just had to learn pins can't have too much detail. There's only but so much that the manufacturing capability can handle when it comes to how small and detailed the pin can get. So I eyeballed it. I guessed what was good. Um, making the tail part, I had to make sure to not make it too long. I didn't want this pin to become a weapon. So I came up with this design. Definitely straight up used my original art as a base, but it really expedited this process of making the design and I'm really happy with how it turned out. When it came to selecting the colors, I just used the color picking tool, or whatever it's called. Um, picked a color that was in the actual painting and used that to fill the entirety of certain sections within the pin artwork. And there you have it. This is just a few minutes here. I'll let you see the speed design process for this pin.
toward the end, I played with making the line work yellow so that I could get a bit of a sense of what the high shine reflective art would look like once it was made into an actual pen, since I knew it was going to use gold metal. And there you have it. I did a bit of changing to the face because I wanted those details to be larger and actually be able to be made, but that was the final image. And now we move on to manufacturing details. Before I dive into what I did, I highly, highly recommend that you guys check out a video by Holly Pixels. Hers was essentially the guide I used to get my own pins made. Um, this video is literally showing my portion, but if you want all the details on cost to manufacturing to specific shipping products, like everything, her video covers a lot of topics that I do not cover in this video, so I highly recommend you go check it out. Um, I'll just be covering the basics of the choices that I had to make. So here we have my pin. I'm going to walk through all the details I had to decide. First, there's the size and quantity. Along its longest axis, how long do you want it to be, and how many pins do you want in general? Then you can have hard or soft enamel. I'll walk you guys through the difference in a minute. Um, the color of the metal. Do you want it to be gold? I've heard of copper as an option. There's also silver. I went with gold. The number of colors of enamel within the pin itself. That's an option. The cutouts. Are there any holes within the pin? Then there's the pin backing. Do you want to have metal clasps or a rubber backing? Also, how many pins do you want on your pin? And lastly, do you want your logo stamped onto the back? When it comes to hard or soft enamel, here are some examples. These Mario pins, you can tell, they, they aren't flat. You can tell the difference in lighting with the colors, especially this koi pin. The color shifts a lot depending on its angle with the lighting. This is a hard enamel pin. It's flat, smooth to the touch, and the color does not vary with the lighting. The soft enamel has a lot more texture as you can see. For my pin specifically, I decided to have it 2 inches in length with hard enamel, gold metal, a lot of colors. I honestly don't know what the base number of colors is, I just know I was charged extra for having extra colors. Um, it is what it is. I did not have any cutouts within the pin, I decided to have two rubber backings and I decided to get my brand name stamped onto the back. After giving the company all of my details, I was provided with a proof of my design and it's pretty detailed. I was very pleased with the extent they went to proof my work and then here are the results. Overall, I am extremely pleased with how these turned out. Saying they're perfect is an understatement. They look absolutely gorgeous. They match my artwork to a T. I was shocked that they were able to get the face details and it's very, very nice quality. The rubber backings at least are not easy to get off which is good because you know anywhere you put the pin it will be secure the way that they embossed my brand name on the back looks exactly like the work that i gave them and there are little burrs where the pin holes or like pins are actually made on the pin itself um not really that big of a deal because the rubber backings do cover it. It's not like you can accidentally snag something or cut yourself, but that's the only thing I noted. Overall, very happy with how these turned out. I will definitely be making more pins again. Um, please let me know what you guys think down below if you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and that's it. As I said earlier, you can find these pins on my Etsy if you're interested, it is linked down below. Also, any artists that I called out, they are linked down below as well, and Holly's video is down there too. You guys, I love these pins so much, I'm actually thinking of only designing pins this year as my new products, I just, I love it so much, but thanks for watching. <laughs>